Welcome to the FCICA product webinar series. We are pleased to have Elvis Torres and Aaron Abbott of Laticree International with us today. Elvis and Aaron, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, my name is Elvis. Uh, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to be with, uh, with us today. We all know that you're very busy. Uh, today we'll be discussing Vapor Band Primer ER, ER standing for Epoxy Rapid. This is a new and innovative product from Laticree. And let me tell you a little bit about us and our product lines. We are a family-owned business currently in about 16, uh, we have about 16 business units around the world servicing about around 150 countries. Here in the United States, we have two product lines within the concrete re remediation division of uh, Laticree. Our NXT line is comprised of self-loving underlayments, overlayments, patch, skims, moisture barriers, and primers which are sold through our distribution channels throughout the United States, pretty much having you covered in any location in any application. And this is Aaron Abbott with Lady Crete. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, and uh, Elvis mentioned, you know, one part of the, the product line being the uh, self-leveling underlayments and under the NXT brand. We also have another brand uh, called Lady Crete Super Cap. Uh, that's the other product category uh, under the concrete remediation lineup. The SuperCap system combines our industry-leading pump truck technology with our specially engineered self-leveling and related products to deliver perfectly flat dry floors. And for over a decade, we've been delivering time-saving, cost-effective solutions to correct uneven concrete, reduce moisture vapor emissions, and shorten build times. And uh, if you haven't seen the pump truck in action, that's not the focus of this webinar, but if you haven't seen the pump truck in action, please uh, go on to our Laticree uh, SuperCab website and uh, watch a video or two. So these are flooring products. Uh, the, flooring, the flooring products which are listed are typical moisture sensitive flooring. Uh, wood floors can buckle under, uh, and warp on their, uh, when they're exposed to too much moisture. Adhesives for vinyl tile, uh, sheet goods, and carpet are affected by high pH levels by moisture working its way through the concrete substrate. The high pH levels cause the adhesives to break down, which can result in complete failures of the floor, which can be very costly. So floor covering manufacturers typically set limitations on the allowable amount of moisture in the concrete substrate. So prior to installing your floor goods, you have to ask the question, how much moisture is too much for the products that I'm going to be installing? And I, I would think that most of the uh, contractors uh, who are on this um, uh, webinar who are familiar with installing these types of floor goods, they're very aware of moisture uh, limitations and moisture instructions. But I'm going to go through some of, uh, some of that here. So just to give you an example of what one major manufacturer of sheet vinyl has to say on um, uh, their product installation instruction sheets, I'll, I'll quote, moisture emissions from the subfloor cannot exceed five pounds per thousand square feet per 24 hours as measured with the calcium chloride test in accordance with ASTM F1869 or uh, ASTM F2170 uh, for relative humidity not to exceed 80%. Um, the manufacturer will not assume responsibility for floor covering failure due to hydrostatic pressure or moisture vapor emission. So that's a quote from a major uh, manufacturer of, uh, of sheet goods. And uh, you know those numbers, five pounds or 80% uh, relative humidity, those will change from floor good to floor good and adhesive to adhesive. But these are typical. This is typical of how uh, manufacturers of sheet vinyl, linoleum, VCT, LVT, carpet tile, engineered wood, etc., state their limitations very typically. So uh, it's true that adhesives are improving over time, and some have very high tolerances of moisture. Um, and that's actually, you know, the, the, the uh, adhesives are getting better with time. But the bottom line is that moisture can damage uh, a floor, and you need some form of protection if it is present. So, and a quick note about the two main ASTM test methods for basically determining how much moisture you have in your concrete before you start. You'll hear about ASTM F1869 and ASTM F2170. So, 1869 is the calcium chloride test. So ba the basic steps to this test, you seal a container 
of calcium chloride, which is a salt pellet, um, underneath a, uh, a protective plastic dome. Uh, that, that calcium chloride absorbs water vapor, and it absorbs it in a very uh, predictable way. So that's sealed under this, this test dome that you put on your floor for 60 to 72 hours, according to the spec. Um, you then perform uh, a calculation based on the added weight of this little dish of calcium chloride, and that can be converted into uh, results that are stated in units of pounds of water per 1,000 square feet per 24-hour period of time. So it's a, it's a measurement of how much water vapor is being emitted from the concrete. Um, you're supposed to do three tests for the first 1,000 square feet and one test for every 1,000 square feet afterwards. And another important point is that the working area where you're doing these tests, it's, it should be preconditioned with an HVAC system probably to uh, occupancy conditions. That's hard to do sometimes, but that's, that's what the, the uh, ASTM method states. Um, the second method, and it's more modern and it's starting to be more common than the calcium chloride method, is F2170. That's the relative humidity or RH test. So that it, this differs from the first test in that you're drilling a hole into the concrete. You're inserting a probe or a well into that, into that drilled hole, um, but you're still allowing it to equilibrate for 72 hours. Um, after that period of time, you're putting a humidity probe into, the, into that little drilled hole well. And again, three tests for the first 1,000 square feet is recommended, one test for every 1,000 square feet thereafter. And uh, again, the working space should be conditioned to occupancy conditions for that, for that building. So those are the two types of tests. That's how you, you figure out how, um, how much water is present. And the image that was actually present in the slide before is of an actual application which we had attended. And as you can see, the hardwood floor was stained pretty severely by moisture which was coming through. That's right. And in this, in this slide, um, this is a picture of a, uh, what I believe is an epoxy coating, kind of a high build epoxy coating on a concrete uh, floor, which did have uh, no moisture mitigation underneath the, the, the coating, and the coating was not rated to, to uh, mitigate moisture. Um, in this case, a pin was used to pop a blister that contained water, and it, and it basically squirted out. Um, so, you know, th this is one of the, uh, the types of effects that can occur under, um, uh, under coatings or sheet goods, et cetera. You can get water, and that's going to cause blistering and other types of failures. And, you know, at this point, I'm just going to briefly talk about water of convenience versus water of intrusion. So concrete when it is mixed and placed initially. The mixed design of structural concrete typically requires extra water to get it to flow. So um, the, ec the, the amount of water that's actually needed to react with the cements is you know, a certain lower level, and, but a little bit more water is added so that you can flow the concrete out onto the floor and place it and smooth it, et cetera. That's called water of convenience. So, for example, in, a, in, a, in any building that has new concrete, there's going to be some water of convenience from the extra water from the mix design that is going to want to evaporate out. That's the type of water that uh, comes into play in elevated slabs. So multi-story buildings with new concrete slabs, um, those above grade uh, uh, slabs will sometimes have, depending on the concrete mix design, they'll have maybe too much moisture for up to a year, six months at least, you know, and, and it really does depend on the heat, the humidity, the drying conditions, the whether it's on deck or, or, or there's other, you know, pre-stressed or uh, conditions. Um, so anyway, that's water of convenience. And uh, the other type of water, which is actually a little bit more serious in some cases, is uh, water of intrusion. And water of intrusion comes from groundwater typically, but it could come from some other sources like leaks. Um, so water of intrusion creates, uh, you know, from groundwater, that can create hydrostatic pressure. And that's typically like in basements or even slabs on grade where their water table is, is close to the concrete slab. So in those cases, um, really, if there's, if there's water 
if there's a water problem, say water coming up through cracks, leaking up through the slab, that needs to be addressed sort of separately from what we're talking about here today. That's that's a potentially structural issue. It's a it's a it's a more serious problem. But certainly water of convenience and uh, water that's evaporating from the the initial mix design or maybe rainwater, et cetera, that's that's not going to be a permanent condition. The products we're talking about today, the Vapor Band Primer ER, is, is able to mitigate that. And one last point, um, generally speaking, you'll hear about moisture barriers uh, versus moisture vapor emission rate reducing coatings like what we're talking about. A moisture barrier uh, underneath a slab is a different animal. That can be a, a sheet of plastic that is specifically designed to stop groundwater from coming, extra groundwater from coming up into uh, the slab on grade, and that should be you know, present in uh, standard commercial building these days. And here are some advantages of vapor band primer ER. Uh, so it's easy to use. It's a two component epoxy coating. It comes in two separate pails. Vapor band primer ER combines two products into one. So basically it acts as a moisture vapor barrier and a primer. So it, it, it'll do those two jobs. Vapor band primer ER combines, um, um, excuse me, um, you, uh, going on the third bullet, I'm apologies. You will need less labor and material when using vapor band primer ER, and you'll see this in the upcoming slides. You can apply any late accrete self leveling underlayment. This includes either NXT or SuperCap, and you can do this in little as three to four hours and up to 24 hours. It can be applied over concrete, which is only five days old, as long as it is structurally sound and so on. So there's no need to wait for those 28 days, which can dramatically slow down the pr production on a job site. Vapor band primer ER can reduce the moisture vapor emission rate from up to 25 pounds to below three pounds, which meets and exceeds the requirements of ASTM F3010. And I'll just jump in and say ASTM F3010 is the gold standard for epoxy or more generally speaking, two component resin-based membrane forming uh, moisture mitigation systems. And it has a very stringent requirement for permeates Okay, so that's the gold standard, and, and this vapor band primer ER does meet these, uh, these requirements in that uh, standard. Thanks, Aaron. This product can also be placed over concrete, which is 100% in relative humidity, or has a pH level of 14, so both aggressive situations. And finally, it is compatible with non-water-based adhesives for floor goods. So if you have a floor which is already flat, but you need uh, a moisture mitigation, in it uh, for your soft goods and so on, Vapor Band Primer ER offers a rapid solution for you as well. So traditionally, if you want to place a self lemming underlayment on top of a moisture barrier, it can be done in two separate ways. So first, sand can be applied to the moisture barrier. This is done until rejection. Is issues with this method is that it's dusty, which is uh, now a big issue with OSHA. There is a cost for the applying the sand, the actual sand, and then the cleanup. All the sand, uh, all the sand which isn't absorbed into the epoxy, you know, obviously has to be vacuumed and removed. You can also apply a primer on top of the moisture vapor barrier, but it has its drawbacks as well, as it is with the cost, the labor to apply it as well. You also have to incorporate a cure time of two separate products, which can uh, prolong your application of your self leveling underlayment, which is in great. So here we're gonna we're gonna go over the following steps of how to apply vapor band primer ER. Uh, it isn't any really any different from any other two component epoxy based moisture barrier. This is an actual uh, application that we did at, in Florida at a surgical center, which had multiple floor failings due to uh, no moisture mitigation being placed in advance. I believe it was like the third time this floor was installed. These pictures you are seeing are from one of the rooms. This is where the adhesive holding the vinyl tile debonded. This is probably because of the pH and the concrete which was coming up. So this created a void and this is a severe case. You can sometimes see even rolling marks from the bed and other equipment used within those areas. Many hospitals uh, throughout the United States are requiring moisture barriers to be placed to avoid costly shutdowns. Saving time in, the, in these situations are especially important because, you know, time is money. These types of businesses do not want to be shut down for any amount of time. Yeah, that's definitely true. Hospitals uh, think about 
you know, removing MRI equipment if you had to and uh, and sort of reinstalling that. It's a very difficult situation. So um, on this slide, this sort of shows the floor after uh, the failure. So, you know, this is a hospital where the floor failed, as Elvis was mentioning, due to excessive moisture in the concrete. Um, the floor was Portland-based concrete. Um, and a moisture reduction coating was not used here uh, initially. And the resilient flooring was adhered using a standard floor adhesive for the purpose. Um, and as you can see, the flooring subsequently failed. It lifted off the floor, but why? What was the mechanism? So in this case, the moisture in the concrete was too high, very simple. Um, and the actual, what's happening sort of behind the scenes in this case, um, was that uh, the alkaline salts that are present in the Portland cement-based uh, concrete slab. Again, remember, Portland-based concrete is highly alkaline, uh, and those salts are, are, are relatively harmless if they're not moving, if they're trapped sort of in the slab, and they're, they're not, they don't have a, a driving force to move um, they're they're relatively harmless to any kind of floor covering. However, the water that was in this uh, slab, which was unmitigated, the, the moisture, um, was able to drive up those salts to the top of the slab. Um, so they get pulled upwards by the water and they interact with the flooring adhesive to break it down and basically soften it. So you can see in this middle photo here, um, you know, we didn't add extra water to this. This is someone's finger in the in the adhesive, and it's a gummy mess. Um, and it's not just from the water. Keep that in mind. It's from the, the combination of the alkalinity and the moisture. Um, so, so anyway, this is why the floor covering and adhesive manufacturers uh, have moisture limitations in their instructions, right? Years of experience, negative experience, when you don't mitigate it properly, this is what's going to happen. We've learned this. The industry knows about it, so that's why there's there's uh, you know a lot of standards and products to deal with these issues. Um, and you know, one note about adhesives for those of you who may be listening, who have been in the business for a while, the old solvent-based adhesives um, back in the 70s and maybe the 80s, early 80s, um, were actually more tolerant to moisture. Uh, but with the limits that have been imposed on VOCs, uh, imposed by regulations, manufacturers of the glues have had to adapt their adhesives over the last couple decades to reduce those VOCs. Um, and that's great for the environment, right? But the newer adhesives are typically, unfortunately, less tolerant to moisture and the alkalinity um, and the problems that you see in these photos. So... There's, uh, there's always trade-offs. So we're going, to be, we're going to begin the process of applying vapor band primer ER. So grinding helps remove the glue and other gam uh, gummy contaminants from the floor. This is done in this application since the glue had broken down so much and we were dealing with a large amount of the area. As you can see in the finger in the uh, last slide, the glue was actually coming off very, uh, very easily. These smaller units, which are shown in the image, are great for small and tight locations, but this will ultimately expose clean concrete, which is the best starting point for any application. And even, uh, and as you can see, they all come in different shapes and sizes. So here we have a grinding equipment, um, and uh, this is a larger unit, which will help cover more ground. All these units, you know, have hoses connected to them, which are lead to a vacuum, which remove all particles and dust, which are removed from the floor. And, all, and at the end of the day, you know, those are all little pieces of debris, which can be bomb breakers which we do not want. So in the previous slides, Elvis was talking about uh, removing a previously installed and failed adhesive and, you know, ad adhesive system. It was gummy. It was a mess. So that actually was a two-part uh, removal process. There was that grinding that occurred. And then they actually followed that once all that wet stuff was gone from the floor with, uh, in this case, a, a shot blaster. So, um, you know, the, the other thing I'll say, regardless of whether or not you're starting from a floor failure, which won't hopefully be often, um, or you're starting with new concrete and you want to do moisture mitigation, some form of mechanical prep is required. Our instructions will call for um, bringing uh, 
a up to a, bringing the surface up to a profile of CSP3. And just um, a word about ICRI CSP3 to 5, if you're not familiar with this. ICRI is the International Concrete Repair Institute. Um, they publish a guideline, a very good guideline on substrate prep. It's called Selecting and Specifying Concrete Surface Preparation for Sealers, Coatings, Polymer Overlays, and Concrete Repair. Um, and it has a lot of photos of different uh, prep methods and what to expect from them. Um, and they also, with this booklet, ICRI offers a, um, a set of concrete surface profile chips. There's a set of 10 of them, and they basically show different surface profiles from, uh, from 1 to 10. And 1 is the smoothest, 10 is the roughest, 3 to 5, which is what we're looking for here uh, as a profile um, for the concrete to install the, uh, the vapor band primer ER, is 3 to 5. And that's going to look somewhat like a, uh, a concrete sidewalk with a broom finish, so a little bit of a bite to it so that the uh, epoxy, when it cures, um, has something to really uh, form a great bond to. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, one other point this, in these photos, you see kind of a two-step method here. There's a small shot blaster and a, a small uh, magnetic roller unit, which is to pick up the extra shot. Some of the other devices that are on the market for blasting will have that built in and vacuum the shot up, uh, but this is just one, one type. <clears throat> so continuing on with the installation of the vapor band primer ER, here's some tips before starting. Um, you know, first of all, we'll definitely want to temperature condition the pails. Um, the liquids in the pails, uh, it's a part A and a part B, and they can kind of thicken up if they're cold, for example. And uh, I don't think you want to start them too hot either because you only have so much pot life to work with. So make sure your SLU crew, with this product, it's, you know, you're buying it because it's fast. You're buying it because it's going to reduce your uh, dry time for, or, or cure time for the epoxy so you can get right on it with self-leveling underlayment or, or other products. But you know, we're, we're sort of focused on SLU here. But So make sure that your crew is ready to go. Um, it's going to be faster than they're used to. Uh, we want to make sure that, you know, right after the, the stuff is dried for about three to four hours, and um, hopefully you're doing all this within a three to 24-hour window um, to get your money's worth out of the product, um, you'll, you'll want to make sure you have your tools ready to go. Uh, typical things for this product are going to be the mill gauge, um, which is a uh, credit card type uh, shaped uh, uh, tool which has notches in it. That'll allow you to gauge how many mills thickness of um, the of, of the coating is down on the concrete. <clears throat> We're looking for uh, 16 mills here. You'll want a drill that's uh, under 300 RPM, um, some, a spatula or paint stick to help work the material out of one of the pails and into the other. Again, it's a part A and part B that we're mixing together. Um, <clears throat> And, and by the way, when we're drilling, when we're mixing, we're trying to avoid uh, the, the entrapment of air bubbles as much as possible. So we're not really whipping the heck out of this product. We're, we're trying to fold it together quickly and efficiently, but not entraining a lot of air bubbles. Um, you'll need a squeegee to distribute, distribute that correct thickness. Um, an EPDM blade uh, or rubber blade with, uh, you know, it might be marked 16 mils, but they're typically marked uh, in fractions of an inch. So, um, say an eighth inch notch squeegee would be a good place to start. Um, that'll typically give us, with this type of product, 15 to 20 mils. Again, we're looking for 16, so that should work well. And lastly, um, we need the 3 8 inch non shedding paint roller. Uh, non shedding because you don't want to be leaving. Um, little little pieces of fiber in the in the epoxy. So you're going to begin the mixing process of a vapor band primer ER. Each pail has a locking band. This band can be removed by a lever. The pail of the uh, B component is short filled a little bit, so it makes it easier. You just have to pour the uh, pail A into pail B. 
and uh, do this slowly just to avoid any spillage onto the nice clean concrete floor that you just prepped. Scrape the sides of the pail with a spatula or paint stick to make sure all the contents are out of it. You know, you want a uniform mix to so it can uh, react as the product data sheet says. Then you're going to proceed for two minutes and mix with that drill of 300 RPM. And as Aaron mentioned before, you know, keep that blade inside to, to avoid trapping air bubbles in the mix. And also uh, make sure this stuff is staged because and because of the fact that it is a rapid curing product, you want to make sure you have enough time to mix it, walk to the area and pour it out. So then when it's, once it's mixed, and this is often done in a, you know, with a crew that's set up as a bucket brigade. So there's one crew mixing or one group of people, maybe one or two guys mixing um, and uh, another set of guys that are bringing the mixed pail out to the floor. So you're pouring contents out into ribbons um, onto the floor and then closely following that with your, um, with your finishing. Um, <clears throat> one thing that, you know, I'd like to mention here too, is as you're mixing, the pails, um, you want to kind of move as fast as possible. You don't want to allow the epoxy to cook. Anybody on this call that has used epoxy products in, in the past is probably aware that the reaction generates heat. So um, e even a residual amount of material, so you, once you've dumped everything out, be careful about where you place the empty buckets. They will, they will continue to react and they can get quite hot um, in some cases, hot enough to boil water. So just keep that in mind. So once you have the vapor band primer yarn on the floor, it can be spread using an eighth inch uh, notch squeegee. This will apply about 15 to 20 mils onto a floor. Vapor band primer yarn requires 16. So again, that mill gauge is going to come in handy for you to measure out uh, how much the thickness of the floor is currently. But you know, when using the squeegee, try to keep the majority of the product on the end uh, which is facing the bare concrete because you don't want any excess flowing back into the area which you just uh, made sure it was at spec. In the picture, you can clearly see the ridges left behind from the squeegee. This probably will yield about 100 square feet per gallon, and it is a 2.4 gallon kit, so expect about 240 square feet per unit. But it does flow very easily and does not require much force from the applicator. Uh, this has been a uh, great feedback from the contractors who have used vapor band primer ER. Uh, they really appreciate the ease of placement. So the final uh, step of sort of working the product onto the floor is the back rolling. So this is where you're using the non-shedding uh, roller. And uh, we, again, we recommend using um, uh, a 3 8 inch non-shedding paint roller. As you can see in the photos, um, you want to back roll at a 90 degree angle. So um, uh, if, if your squeegee is going north-south, you want your paint roller to be going east-west. Um, and again, check your thickness with a mill gauge. And, and that, that should be something that you have uh, a few of on the job site, as we mentioned um, earlier. And, and again, you know, the, the the purpose with the two-step process of the uh, the squeegee and the paint roller, um, you're really trying to squeeze all of that epoxy into the, the nooks and crannies, any pores in the concrete. We want to um, you know, make, make sure that the entire surface is, is covered. This continuous film thickness is going to be the moisture barrier. So you want to make sure that it has really good integrity. So we are at the final steps of... Uh applying vapor band primer ER. So it actually has a fantastic cure time. As we have been mentioning throughout this presentation, it's about three to four hours, which is a great turnaround time for any project. This is uh, when it becomes tack free, so you won't see a transfer or an impression from your finger on the surface anymore. At this time, the product will accept, you know, any lady crease self-leveling underlayment or selected adhesive. And you have an a, uh, application window of 24 hours. If you happen to miss this window, you, uh, that's not you know, nothing to worry about. You can easily apply Lady Crete's primer bond to the surface, which is a one component primer, and this is made to promote the adhesion of cement-based products to smooth surfaces. But again, I have to say, you know, any left uh, any self-leveling underlayment from the NXT or SuperCap line can be used with uh, Vaporband Primer ER, but in the majority of these applications, we, we, were, we already have used Vaporband Primer ER. NXT Level Plus is the 
selected as self leveling under Lehman currently because of the quick turnaround time. You know, these buildings don't want to be shut down for a long time. So with a three hour cure and then another 16 hour cure for the self leveling under Lehman, you know, uh, it's a very fast in service turnaround time. So. And you know the types of projects that are going to really benefit from uh, from this are are projects where maybe it's a renovation in a in a shopping mall or in a hospital in in an area where um, the tenant wants to get back on or for for uh, you know reasons of just economy you want your crew to go out in the morning and to to uh, to place the uh, uh, the the epoxy and then place the uh, the self leveler or you know some you know, some of our other later creek products on top same day. Yeah, and actually on that point, Aaron, um, if you need more mitigation and you and you're planning to do a tiled floor because you, know, you know stones do have limitation on moisture as well. Sometimes the stone can change color, so on and so forth. We do have a line of adhesives that can help. So if you have a floor that's already flat, but you're just looking to moisture mitigate it, again, in a quick uh, time, three to four hours, you could use Vapor Band Primary R. And the selected adhesives which we have at your disposal is our 254 Platinum, 257 Titanium, our Multimax Light, and our tri -Light. And these are all used to bond tiles to floor from small to big. You know, quick and simple system. So vapor band goes down three, four hours. You apply any of these cement-based tile adhesives, and you'll be good to go. Same rules apply. Again, 24-hour window. And this is the finished sur surgical center which we had repaired with vapor band primary R. ER. So beautiful floor once again. You know, we would like to thank you all for you know joining us, and we're going to be taking some questions currently. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, so we do have quite a bit of time for questions. Um, so I have one ready to go here that we can start with. Um, what is the square footage per unit? You'll get about 100 square feet per gallon, and it is a 2.4 gallon unit. So in total, a unit will yield about 240, uh, 240 square feet. So audience, if you are unsure where to post your questions, you can do so in the bottom left panel on your screen. Uh, one of the tabs is called Q&A. You just go ahead and type your question. Okay, we have another question, and this is from one of our Sims who's overseas. Uh, he wants to know if the product is available in Asia. Currently only uh, available in the United States, but we do have offices in uh, Asia, so there could be a possibility for sure. Excellent. So, Joe, that's something to look out for. Definitely get in contact with those offices and let them know that you're interested. So you mentioned some of the other products that you recommend um, using with this primer. Is, is it part of a specific set of products or a system of products, or do you just have other products that you're able to recommend? We just have uh, other products that we're able to recommend. Uh, we Primarily, the use of Vapor Band Primary R was with self loving underlayments because of the fact that we severely cut down the time from either applying sand into moisture barriers or applying another primer on top. So again, we're eliminating step, we're eliminating products, we're eliminating the labor that's needed to install those parts of the uh, older installation. So overall, product can be used in a wider range of applications from NXT, our super cap, or also our tile adhesive. So no specific system really great generic product for many different sectors. So you mentioned that there's a the 24-hour limit, um, and you said that it's it's okay if you pass that. Um, is there a certain point where it's not okay? So Elvis mentioned that uh, we recommend the use of um, – uh, there's actually two potential primers that we can use. One is our Latacrete uh, Prime and Bond. Um, which has some uh, uh, sand mixed into it, uh, some particles mixed into it to add a little bite. Um, and you can also do a, a you can perf you can use our uh, standard Latacrete NXT primer um, and follow the instructions for slurry bond um, and use that as well. However, um, we'd also recommend that uh, you, there's a lot of different factors that can happen over time. We would recommend though. You know, typically that you'd want to, uh, if you're getting much further than 24 hours, that you would want to do a light sanding to rough up the surface because these epoxies do become um, 
uh, quite glassy and they do get hard and, uh, you know, products like self levelers want to bond onto something that, it, that has a little bit of a bite. So, uh, we would, um, recommend a little bit of light sanding prior to the primer application after 24 hours. Okay. Um, you answered most of my other questions. Um, so while the audience um, perhaps submits one or more questions here, we do have plenty of time. Is there anything else about Laticree or um, the primer ER that you'd like to share? Sure. Um, you know, we've had some questions come in uh, uh, that seem pretty common. One of one of the things is how long do you mix this product for typically? And we may have kind of gone over that quickly, but. Um, so, you know, typically with mixing, you're, you're, you're pouring the smaller unit into the larger pail. Um, this kit is sold in a, in a Part A and a Part B, as we mentioned, and one of the, the pails is underfilled, so <clears throat> it can take the full volume of the, the other part. So that's, that's poured in slowly, um, while mixing is going to take about three minutes. And um, as soon as that's mixed, you'll, you'll be able to actually visually see um, ribbons inside your, your pails under the, the force of the drill um, coming together and, and forming a uniform look. So as soon as that's done, to, and again, typically three minutes, um, you want to go out and, and bucket brigade this out to your floor and uh, pour it in ribbons, as we showed earlier, and start the spreading with the notch squeegee. And um, actually, there's there's a question that comes up often with me when talking about vapor band primary ER, and it, the one question is, does it change color during the process? And no, uh, it is a clear amber. Once you start mixing it, you apply it to a floor, it's a clear amber, and once it's cured, it is still the same color. It's a cl clear amber color. Uh, as Aaron said, at the longer epoxies in general cure, the shinier they get. So you'll definitely be able to tell the difference uh, once vapor band primer is fully cured. Again, we have a, the lower window limit is 40 degrees, the higher is 90. Obviously the lower that you go in the temperature window, the slower the product will cure. That's just typical in any application. We've seen anywhere from four to five hours in the 40 to 50 range. And when we're up in the 80s, as soon as even two and a half hours to three. So temperature does have a factor to play uh, in the application of this product. And, um, but it, it's, a, it's a very durable product, which is, which is always comforting for, for our, our customers. And another thing to think about, uh, if you talk to any of our tech service people, what they'll they'll use a phrase that you'll hear often, which is um, tacky to the touch, but non-transferring. And that's that's the point at which the product is ready to um, uh, you're, you're ready to put your self leveler directly on top of it. Is again after that three to four hour period, um, you're going to be physically touching it with your fingertip and it's going to feel tacky. It's going to feel tacky, but it's not going, the time you need to wait until is when it's not transferring to your finger there. It becomes very obvious at that point that it's uh, it's tacky, but non-transferring. So you will hear that. And uh, another moisture mitigation product that we have in our line is the NXT vapor uh, reduction coating. So a little different from Vapor Band Primer ER still offers the F3010 compliance, but it is a two-step process, so more of the traditional. So where in Vapor Band, you don't need to do the add the additional primer for any cement-based product or um, and the quick turnaround time of just three to four hours. Our NXT our vapor reduction coating has a cure time of 12 hours, but afterwards you do have to either apply a primer or while it's rolled out, apply sand into it. So we have uh, the older generation, we have a new generation of uh, vapor control, which honestly is the pretty much the only one on the market currently. We're the only one that's pretty much offering the vapor band primary R with the solution it has with pretty much a wider range of self-loading underlings to tackle any type of application you could think of from rapid to high thickness and every way other. One other question that uh, that does come up as well is, you know, if we already are starting with a, a very flat concrete floor and we need moisture mitigation, we put this product down, um, can I install, uh, 
you know, say resilient uh, floor good adhesives directly on top of it? And there's a very simple answer, and that's, that answer is read the instructions uh, that are written by the, uh, the, the adhesive manufacturer and find out different adhesive manufacturers will um, have different substrate requirements. So typically there's a acceptable substrate section in the adhesive um, recommendations. Please, please always read those. And um, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, re- floor good adhesives for resilience will require some form of absorbent surface like a, a concrete surface. Um, in that case, you can, uh, you, we can prime this and skim coat it, um, <clears throat> skim coat or skim coat within the three to uh, 24 hour window. And that skim coat will provide the, uh, the surface that adhesives that want to bond to concrete and not epoxy would require. So again, and then there's other, there's other um, adhesives that don't mind if they're being adhered to epoxies, but by far the norm is that they, they, you'll see um, a requirement for a concrete like surface, an absorbent surface to, uh, to bond to. And um, one note to as well with the vapor band, it comes with a 25 year warranty, system warranty of Lady Creek when used with other products. So nice long time to make sure that your floor is well and taken care of. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in from our audience, so I think we can wrap up. And of course, if you think of any questions later, um, you're welcome to reach out to me and I can pass those questions along, or I'm sure you can contact Latikri and Aaron and Elvis directly. Yes, actually, I can. Uh, I'll provide my email right now, just in case if anyone is interested in, in talking with their sales rep in their area, particularly in for Vapor Bam Primary R or any other product that we offer, because we do offer a larger range of products from shower systems to grouts, tile adhesives, epoxy flooring, you name it, we probably make it. So my email address is e r torres t o R R E S at ladycrete.com. So again, that's E R Torres, T O R R E S at ladycrete.com. And I'll pass you to the correct person. And, and uh, if you have any other questions for surface prep, surface preparation, stuff, loving underlayments, moisture mitigation, patching, skimming, please shoot them my way. And also SuperCap as well. So another fantastic system, which hopefully we'll do another webinar in the future about, because uh, that's a, that's all in itself a, a phenomenal system that Lakery offers our customers. Absolutely. Um, okay. So on behalf of FCICA, thank you so much, Elvis and Aaron, for presenting today's webinar sponsored by Laticrete. It was excellent to hear about your products and especially this Vapor Band Primer ER. Um, Sims who are online, you can now navigate to the Submit Credit tab in the lower left panel and complete the feedback survey to receive credit. Uh, Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us today, and have a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you, Lizzie. Have a great day.